Welcome back third graders to our science lessons. In this video, we're going to cover the first part of lesson 4 in our unit 5. As you watch this video, you may follow along in your book. Previously in lesson 3, we explored how individual traits or group behavior can increase the chances of an organism's survival and reproduction. In this lesson, we're going to explore populations that live in a variety of environments and examine how changes in environments affect organisms. In your book's page 320, we can see a picture of a river or a stream flooded with water. When the amount of water is greater than what the river can receive and carry away, the river will flood. A flood can cause extreme changes in the environment, like people, Animals may lose their homes or food source because of the flood. Animals have to adjust to the changes. If animals don't adjust or leave, they may die. Let's watch this video to know more about floods and how they happen. stopped raining. It's been raining here for a few days and the news was saying that we might even get a flood. A flood is where there's water all over, even where there's usually land. Floods can be small and only cover a little space or they can cover an entire city. Now that it's stopped raining, that probably won't happen here. But it is pretty weird to think about the ground suddenly being covered with water. Normally, when rain falls, the water can go a few places. The rain can fall into someplace already holding water, like a lake or river, or it can land on the ground, which soaks up the water like a sponge. But have you ever tried pouring water on a sponge for a while? Eventually, the sponge can't hold any more water, and it starts to drip. If too much rain falls too quickly, something similar happens with the ground. It becomes completely full of water. The lakes or rivers holding the water can also become too full and begin to overflow. If the ground is too wet to soak up the extra water, a flood starts to form, almost like a giant puddle. A normal puddle will slowly sink into the ground, but during a flood, there's nowhere for puddles to go, so they keep growing and growing. Sometimes the flood water will cover roads, cars, and even buildings. Everything looks so different during a flood. It's like there's a new pond or lake. You can even see which areas are higher up in a town and which are lower. The high spaces stick out of the water like islands, and the low spaces get completely covered by the floodwaters. Even when the rain goes away, the floodwaters can take a long time to go back down sometimes days or weeks. But eventually, it soaks into the ground or evaporates and goes back into the air. Then, the flood is over. Oh, Squeaks wants to know if you can explore a flood. That's a really good question. Floods aren't for exploring. Even though it looks like a big pond, a flood can be dangerous. As the flood water rises, it picks up everything it can along the ground. There can be tree branches, trash, and even cars hiding under the water. The water can also pick up germs and other things that can make people sick if they drink it, or sometimes if they touch it at all. It's definitely not a good place to go swimming. Uh, Squeaks wants to know, what should people do during a flood? Well, it's a lot like what people do for other big problems, like a hurricane or a tornado. They make sure to be prepared. Lots of people have an emergency kit with plenty of food, water, and other supplies to stay safe until the flood is over. Exactly! We keep an emergency kit in the fort's closet. If a flood did happen, we would stay inside as long as it was safe and make sure not to go too close to the water. In some places, especially near really big rivers or where it rains a lot, big floods can happen more often. People who live in places like that might have a special location like a flood shelter to go to if there's a big flood. That way, they can stay out of the water if it gets too close to their homes. Luckily, floods don't happen very often near the fort, and this storm didn't cause one either. But I bet there are some good puddles outside. We should go do some splashing. When rain or snow doesn't fall for a long time, the ground becomes very dry and plants may die. This change is harmful to animals that eat plants and use them for shelter. But when storms roll in, an even more extreme change can happen, 
Lightning can strike, causing fire. Wildfires can spread quickly and destroy many animals' homes. So, if we look at the picture in our book, page 321, we can easily tell that there's a wildfire. And if you notice on the bottom right, there's a picture of a fox. This is a San Joaquin kid fox who used to live in this forest, but now the forest is on fire. What do you think will happen now that the fox lost its home? We know that animals like this fox get food, shelter, and water from its environment. They need these things to survive. If these needs aren't met, the kid fox will die. Therefore, the animal must find a new place that provides it with the things it needs to survive. In Exploration 1, we will recognize ways in which an environment can change. We're going to understand as well that living and non-living things interact in different habitats and that changes in these habitats affect both living and non-living things. Some changes to environments happen quickly, others happen slowly and over a period of time. Some of these changes are floods, droughts, mudslides, and volcanic eruptions. What events do you think happen quickly? You probably guessed it. Floods, mudslides, and volcanic eruptions happen quickly, but droughts take time to happen. Floods can change an environment by washing away land. In your book, page 322, we can see a picture of a road flooded with water. Extra water from rain may cause rivers, lakes, or streams to overflow. Mudslides occur when land on water-soaked hills slides down the hills. You can see that in the picture here. When the land gives way in a mudslide, it takes trees and other plants with it. In your books, page 322, number 2. What other kinds of changes can you think of that might happen quickly in an environment? Some examples are Forest fires, tornadoes, hurricanes, these are all examples of changes. When an environment changes, it affects the plants and animals that live there. Plants may all die, animals lose their homes and sources of food, they may also die if they can't make changes. On page 323, number 3, we're going to circle at least one thing that was affected by the change in the environment. In the first picture, we can see the effect of a volcanic eruption. A volcano can cover land with lava and ash. Lava is melted rock from inside a volcano. It can change land. It may kill plants. The ash can cloud the sky so that the temperature of the land cools. Since the lava changes the land when it covers it, so we can circle the areas around here to show the effect of this change. In the second picture, we can see an oxbow lake. A river might change its course over many years and form an oxbow lake. When water changes, animals that live near rivers may move away or change. New organisms may take their place. We can circle this area that shows a new lake made by the river. In the third picture, we can see some dead plants. Drought, or lack of water, may cause plants to die. Less water also means less food for animals. Animals may need to search for food and water elsewhere, or they may die out. You can circle any area that shows where the plant is dry or dead. In the last picture, we can see a bulldozer. Humans use it to cut down trees and clear land. This kills plants and destroys food sources of animals that live there. Animals may move into areas where they would not normally be found. We can circle this area around here to show the effect of humans clearing the land. On page 324 in number 4, we're going to match the examples of the environmental change to all the types of changes that the images show. The environmental changes are land change, human changes, and water change. And we have the following images. The first picture shows lava from the volcano on the road. 
We said before that the lava changes the land when it reaches it. So, it is a land change. The second picture is of dry or dead plants due to the drought or the lack of water. So, it is a water change. The third picture is of an oxbow lake. Remember when we said that when rivers change their course, they form small lakes. So, this is a water change. And the last picture is of the bulldozer that humans use to cut down trees and clear the land. So, it is a human change. On the same page in number 6, think of one or two kinds of environmental changes. What might happen to the animals that live in those environments as a result of those changes? When floodwaters go down, animals move back. When volcanoes erupt, animals flee and may not return. We know that plants need water to survive. But what happens when the plant does not get enough water? Well, it will die. And who eats plants? Yep, you guessed it, animals. So when the animals don't have enough plants to eat, they will either move to a new place or die. When a fast change happens, such as a mudslide, a volcanic eruption, or a flood, all the plants might be killed, but not all the animals. Do you know why? Well, plants cannot move to avoid an environmental change, but for animals, some can flee the area and find a safer place to live. In exploration 2, we're going to learn how organisms react to environmental changes in order to survive. And we're going to describe how populations change when their habitats change. Wildfires may start for many reasons. As we said in the beginning of the lesson, they often start when the forest is very dry and lightning strikes without any rainfall. The lightning creates a spark that can set dry bushes, grasses, and trees on fire. A wildfire can wipe out much of a forest environment. Let's watch this video to know more about wildfires. On average, wildfires burn up to 5 million acres of land in the United States each year. While they can start naturally, wildfires are often caused by humans with devastating consequences. Wildfires are large, uncontrolled infernos that burn and quickly spread through wild landscapes. Types of wildfires may include forest, brush, and peatland fires, depending on the landscapes affected. Wildfires require three components known as the fire triangle, a heat source, fuel, and oxygen. Heat sources such as the sun, a hot bolt of lightning, or a smoldering match can supply enough heat to spark a fire. That spark then turns into flames when fuel or any flammable material is present. Dry, dead grasses, leaves, and trees are common fuels for wildfires, but so are living vegetation called green fuels. Pine trees and other evergreens contain flammable oils that can burn when exposed to a heat source. As the fuel burns, the resulting flames feed and thrive off of oxygen. When air movement, or wind, occurs, not only is more oxygen supplied to the fire, but it may also help transport and spread the flames. Since wildfires occur outdoors, they have a nearly endless supply of oxygen from our atmosphere to burn. Many wildfires are the result of natural causes. A warmer climate and weather patterns like El Nino can create the hot, dry conditions necessary for fires to erupt. However, about 90% of wildfires are caused by human activity, such as campfires that become uncontrollable, improperly handled cigarettes, or arson. Although wildfires occur worldwide, they are most common in the western United States. There, High temperatures, drought, and frequent lightning and thunderstorms can create the perfect setting for wildfires. While they can be destructive, and sometimes even deadly for humans, wildfires do play an important role in nature. 
They can help a forest by removing harmful insects or diseased plants. And they can clear thick canopies to help sunshine reach seedlings on a forest floor. By being aware of the conditions necessary for wildfires to occur, they can be managed and prevented, thereby saving lives and making way for the positive effects of wildfires. A population is made up of all the members of a certain kind of plant or animal in a specific area in an environment. For example, this is a population of sunflowers. This is a population of pine trees, a population of giraffes, and a population of penguins. In your book's page 325, we can see a picture of a forest fire. Do you think this environment is dry? If you said yes, you're right, since we can see that the grass is brown, which means it's dry. So the animals living in this environment are going to be affected. What do you think might happen to the populations of plants and animals in a forest that has been destroyed by fire, like in the picture we just saw? Some plant populations will die out or be reduced, Animals may escape the fire but lose their shelter or food source. This may force the animals to move somewhere else. We all know what this is. A pine cone. This is a closed cone and this is an open cone. During a wildfire, the closed pine cones in the trees or on the ground will open because of the heat from the fire. The seeds inside the cones are now free and able to germinate again, so this is an advantage or a good result of a wildfire. In your book's page 326 in number 8, we're going to circle the animal or plant that is reacting to a change in the environment. The first picture shows a pine cone. During a wildfire, plants will die, but some plants reproduce. Some pine trees have cones that open and release seeds in a fire, as we said before. The seeds settle on the forest floor and grow into new plants. So, we will circle the pine cone since it is reacting to the forest fire by opening up and releasing its seeds. The second picture shows a vole, which looks like a hamster or a mouse. The Amargosa vole only lives in certain parts of California. It depends on certain plants for food. During a drought, plants die, so the voles move to new areas to find food. So, we will circle the vole since it is moving to a new area after the drought. In the third picture, we can see a pika, a cousin to the rabbit. This pika lives in the mountains of the northwest because it must stay cool to survive. If an area becomes too warm, the pika must move farther north where temperatures are cooler. So, we will circle the pika since it has to move to a cooler area when the area becomes too warm. And finally, in the last picture, we can see a type of plant. A sudden change in temperature that is not seasonal could upset the natural system in an environment. This plant died because of a freeze that happened out of season. So we will circle the area here where it shows the dead plant from the sudden cold weather. In your books, page 328 in number 10, we're going to choose the words or phrases that best complete the sentences below. We have survive and reproduce, move to a new location, rapid, and lose their habitat. Plants and animals react when an environment changes. When a fire destroys a forest, pine trees are able to blank by releasing seeds. Releasing seeds is a type of adaptation that helps the pine trees survive. So, the pine trees are able to survive and reproduce. When a beaver builds a dam, it changes the flow of water. Other animals in the area may blank. Dams disturb some animals' homes, which means that they may lose their habitat. When the temperature of an environment gets too warm, animals that need cold temperatures to survive blank. Animals need to look for a cooler place, so they would move to a new location to stay alive. And finally, 
when rapid or quick temperature changes happen to an environment, plants and animals may die because they cannot get away from the temperature change quickly enough or at all. On the same page, number 11, what do you think might happen to other plants and animals that live in a forest that has caught fire? We've already discussed this idea before, so you probably know the answer by now. Some plants will grow back from seeds, like the pine cones. Animals affected by the fire may have to find other types of shelter in the forest or may move to other areas, like the fox. Some animals may not survive the fire. That's it for this video. Tune in to the next video to explore the relationship between human activities and the environment in Exploration 3.